May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the rest vestments today because it is the, the feast of Saint Januarius and companions martyrs. We wind the clock back to the, the beginning of the third century where we have this Emperor Diocletian who was the persecutor of the Christians. Of all the miracles, wonders and theological rarities that leave God's family in awe, the miracle of today's Saint Januarius is one of the most outstanding. Three times a year on the day of his martyrdom, September the 19th today, and on the day of his commemoration as patron of Naples in Italy, December the 16th, and on the Saturday before the first Sunday of May, which recalls the gathering together of his various relics, the blood of this Saint Januarius liquefies. What does this mean? It means it, that it changes from a, a solid state to a liquid state. Since at least the 1300s, a small glass vial holding the deep red stable substance has been removed from a safe location and brought before the faithful in the Cathedral of Naples by a priest or bishop. The vial is placed near the other relics of St. Januarius, which rests under the altar. And then the drumbeat of the prayer starts. They sometimes continue for hours, but sometimes only for minutes. God is bidden, fuel is poured on the fire of faith, and the mysterious moment arrives. Spontaneously, the stable, solid red substance is transformed into a liquid that splashes around the inside walls of the vial for all participants to see. The blood of Saint Januarius has come to life. The city of Naples fires a 21-gun salute from a nearby castle to signal that the transformation has occurred. There is no explanation of how this happens. This is a mystery. But it happens, happens often, and has happened consistently for many, many centuries, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The proof is the outcome itself, that a solid substance liquefies cannot be debated. The liquefied blood must be the starting point for speculation, not a presumption of magic or sleight of hand. That some things of God cannot be explained without the informed trust of faith is simply to state that God is not understandable. God is a mystery. If he were un understandable, he would fit conveniently into our tiny brains and thus not be Almighty God. But no faith is needed to accept this miracle. What happens is a reality, what happens is a fact. Little known is known about the life of this saint today, San Juan Januarius. An uh, extant letter from the year 432 mentions him as if he was already known. It states that a nearby bishop, a friend of Saint Augustine, named Saint Paulinus of Nola, had a vision of Januarius just before Paulinus died, and that Januarius was a bishop and martyr and a well-known member of the Church of Naples. It is believed that our saint was beheaded or decapitated during the persecution under the reign of this persecutor of the Christians, Diocletian. In the decade before Christianity was legalized in the early 300s, Perhaps the most interesting thing about the liquefying of St. Januarius' blood is that it occurs, as we said, for no specific purpose. No sick person is healed. No sacrament is celebrated. No bishop is elected. It is a divine folly. It occurs to edify, to entertain, and to inspire as if religion were a theological sport. With God simply putting his talents on display for all to behold the spectacle 
from the pews to gaze at a wonder that can neither be explained nor be resisted. This is a mystery, this is what we like to unpack today. Our faith is a mystery. We have these wonderful mysteries of our faith, the Blessed Trinity, we have the Incarnation. What about the virginal birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sacrifice of the Mass, the mystery of mysteries? What can we say about the sacrifice of the Mass? This is a meeting face to face with God at Golgotha. Every human must realize the importance of this majestic moment when he comes under the cross of Almighty God. During the Holy Mass, we receive the grace of meeting God face to face even more because few were those who had the opportunity to live the passion of our Lord during his life. Now God lives through it during every sacrifice of the Holy Mass so that every human being can in a certain way go back in time until the time when Christ walked the earth so that no one may judge God to be unfair. We have all received this grace for it is the greatest grace given to mankind and each Christian can participate fully and suffer with God Jesus Christ at the moment during which he was saving the world at Calvary, the moment that will last forever in all the holy masses that were, are, and will be celebrated throughout the course of time. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our God, becomes incarnate by the power of the Holy Spirit at the consecration, where the womb becomes, as it were, the hands of the priest. The holy mass is then the miracle above miracles. It is the realization of the sacrifice of Golgotha, the mystery of the passion of Christ on earth. Here and now happens what, is hap what was happening when I was not yet on the earth, 2,000 years ago. It is known that the main obstacle which prevents us from experiencing adequately the Holy Mass is in this participation nowadays is the lack of faith then everything appears to be incomprehensible and empty. Just yesterday we saw in this beautiful mystery of this great Franciscan saint, as you mentioned, Saint Joseph of Copertino, when he celebrated the Holy Mass, it could last for two hours or even up to five hours. He celebrated in this way in the private chapel in the convent. We remember, we said yesterday, as he meditated upon the presence of Christ in the host, consecration many times he found himself unable to elevate the host and we said also when he broke the host at the time of communion he found this most difficult because he perceived people in the state of mortal sin also something of a mystery yesterday we forgot to mention is that this great saint joseph Copertino spent he died at around the age of 61 years of age, but half of, the, half of the time he spent, it says in the Franciscan Book of Saints, in ecstasy above and flying in the air. Half of his life was spent this way. This emptiness and lack of understanding of the Holy Mass then can be fueled by faith. Here the church has committed the greatest mistake thinking that it is possible to fill the emptiness and the lack of understanding of the Holy Mass by introducing comprehension, by shortening the incomprehensible portions of the Holy Mass, as well as by introducing new forms more interesting for the faithful. However, these actions have in fact the opposite effect because faith is needed here. This is what we have lost in the Holy Mass in these years. Humility and the root of humility is reverence, reverence for our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. These, the radical changes should have opened the church to the whole world and should have made it accessible and open to everyone, causing, but caused the faithful to lose the sense of sacrum and of mystery in these years. Today, no one goes anymore to Holy Mass to let oneself be crucified together with Christ. We go to the Holy Mass to listen to the Word of God, 
they say, to receive graces, to listen to the priest and to settle our affairs with God. We go out, we go out of a sense of obligation, but not from the need to take part in the punishment with which was saddled our Savior for the sins, for the sins of the whole world. Almighty God has already done everything, but the fate of the world depends on man. And today, well, there are even few priests, few are the priests who consciously ascend on this holy mountain of Golgotha and extend their arms for Jesus Christ. Even fewer are those who urge the souls to do the same. God, in fact, is waiting for souls, for their conversion, but God, in his Son, has already accomplished everything. He cannot suffer yet more, and he cannot suffer for a second time, because what has been accomplished in God continues, has no beginning, and dear brothers and sisters in Christ, has no end. It cannot be repeated because it lasts. It is difficult for man thus to understand this mystery. You have to believe this mystery then. Under the cross, Jesus Christ has accomplished everything that he could have accomplished in order to help us attain the graces which he has obtained for us. We have e Jesus Christ on the cross has even given us. We have received a mother. We have received an intercessor and a magnificent consoler. We have obtained the support of the mother, the Corredemptix, the mother of God, and the goodness and the gentleness of her heart, from which now and always, and always cares for the soul with an unimaginable concern. Now the further fate of the world depends on man because God has already done everything. As Catholics, we make our thanksgiving at Holy Mass with our participation in this glorious sacrifice and with our adoration. This is what we do as Catholics. We know we are living in this time of this virus. This is a mystery. Look at where we are now. Man spends billions and billions of pounds on all of these armaments, on nuclear weapons, on satellites, etc., etc. And yet he cannot comprehend this mystery because this virus is invisible. It is allowed by God, this virus, as a chastisement for our sins. We cannot know the cause of this virus, but we do know that as Christians, what we must do, and we must be holy. Please God, never let our churches be closed again if there is another outbreak of this COVID-19 because this is our lifeline, the Holy Mass, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ in Calvary to save our souls and the souls of the whole world. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.